Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be talking about my American War of Independence uh, rebasing project that I've got going on right now. What we're going to do is we're going to take my American War of Independence figures that I already have mounted and based for British Grenadier. I'm going to take them off of their bases and I'm going to put them on bases for Black Powder. Uh, Black Powder is a rule set that allows you to use any basing convention that you want. So you can use uh, this style basing. You can use one figure. You can use two figures on a base. You can do however you want to do it. But uh, the suggested way is a 40 by 40 millimeter base with four figures on it. And uh, it's not necessary. I could continue to play black powder with figures mounted like this, except I'm just a little bit anal. So <laughs> I want to go ahead and mount it per the recommended way to do it. And then what I'm going to do is show you that process. And then also throughout this uh, AWI project, you're going to see uh, me painting a few more units and also filling in some blanks of units that I don't have completed. I'm going to be completing them. And then I'm also going to be expanding my army just a little bit so that I can actually do Princeton. Uh, so I've been thinking about doing Princeton uh, for a long time. I did Princeton in 15 millimeter. Uh, but I, when I moved to 28 millimeters, I decided to do Freeman's Farm because I want to do something different. But I'm really, I really want to do Princeton again. Uh, with enough figures to do Princeton, I would be able to do a lot of different battles as well. I could use them as like proxies and things like that. Okay, so let's get started. Now, you get, I, I have a, uh, an X-Acto knife here, and I'm using the X2 or the Mark II blades. Uh, with a fat handle. This is a handle I can grip onto because I don't want to use a handle like this. It'll actually roll in my hand. It'll, it could slip in my hand. This is not going to roll in my hand. Also, I don't have a really good grip on this. This is great for little projects or just normal X-Acto knife projects. But for this project, I need a really thick handle. All right, now I also grabbed a small little cardboard box. Let me move these militia, continental militia, out of the way. Uh, you need a little box. Uh, why? Because when I start cutting on these bases, pieces of flock and everything's going to go into this box. Hopefully, maybe not all of it, but maybe a lot of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the command stand. Uh, let me put my eyes on. These are my these are my Coke bottle glasses. See that? <laughs> when I paint or when I would do any kind of up close miniature work, I put those glasses on. That's the only time I ever wear those glasses. Okay, now these bases, what I did was they're thin metal uh, bases, and then on the bottom of the base, I put this foam rubber to give it thickness. Uh, yeah. So what I need to do now is cut close to the metal without cutting below or under the metal. And be very careful with these sharp exacto sharp knives because I last night I cut myself doing some British. All right, now I don't know if you went and saw my... Let's back up a little bit. I want to talk about an old video I made. I made a video. It's like a five-part series uh, where I painted these figures. I painted all my Freeman's Farm figures and I went step by step and showed you exactly how I did it. Priming, you know, the washing, the dipping. But when I went to make, when I glued these guys onto the bases, I used some kind of Elmer's epoxy. It was, it, it wasn't just white Elmer's. It was like a super strong, heavy duty, like epoxy, and now I'm regretting it because it's taking a lot to get these figures off of these bases. Uh, 
but they were permanently on the, I mean, they were pretty darn secure on these bases. They weren't going anywhere. All right, so uh, also on top of that epoxy and in between the bases, you can kind of, you can kind of get the idea right here that there is no like bumps to their stands. And the reason why that is, is I put uh, spackle or plaster in between the bases to give them a, a smooth floor. And then I went in and uh, put the gravel and I also did the, the flock. And so these guys are like quadruple layered uh, secure on here. So let's go ahead. Now I have to get, sometimes I just cut into the gravel and it's okay if you just, there, see what I'm trying to do? I'm getting underneath gravel and now it's okay if I just break a piece off right and you can see the plaster and the metal and now what I'm trying to do is when I get to the figure I'm gonna to try to use the exacto knife to cut into or get underneath the pewter and then whoops you saw some plaster pop open to try to get to dig and gouge underneath now I'm putting a little bit of pressure here so that I can use the X-Acto knife itself as a lever to pop the thing off. Uh, but I don't want to do it so much that I risk breaking my X-Acto knife. So I just do a little bit at a time just to see, to test the waters basically. Okay, that guy's on there. And sometimes I'll start from different angles just to Okay, this guy doesn't these guys don't want to come off. They're on there nice and secure. Okay, that's that's a good thing, right? And that's why I regret making a permanent. Actually, okay, looking at this base, this is one of the very few bases that I actually mounted on Litco plywood. And that might be why they're secured on here even more because the glue could get into the wood and soak in. And that's why I was using the epoxy on the metal because I didn't think, and I knew that Elmer's wasn't going to hold it uh, the way I wanted it. You know, I knew it wasn't going to be very secure. So I went with that Elmer's epoxy. Uh, gorilla, it's like Gorilla Glue, except made by Elmer's. Uh, but on my next set of figures, they're all going to be on wood, and they're, or they're going to be on the uh, War Games Warlord, they're going to be on Warlord Games, uh, the plastic bases, and or the or Litco wood bases, and in that case, I won't need to use epoxy. I'll just use standard Elmer. Elmer. <clears throat> I'll just use standard Elmer's glue. Yeah, because I think I cut into the wood here. Yeah, you can see how the plywood splintering there. I must have I must have cut down into the wood. Wow, these guys are on there, aren't they? Jeez, Louise. we go now this guy's bringing some flock with him that's okay I don't want to yank on the model because I don't want to break the figure off the base so you just got to kind of baby him off of there but you see see what's going on here now I'm just gonna break this off 
just to get it out of my way, basically. And I'm just drop, dropping the box. Yeah, this feels almost like rubber, you know? Now, standard Elmer's glue, you can just water down and it will lose its adherence. It'll it'll reconstitute into a liquid if you put it in, if you submerge it under water. But I don't want to do that with these figures. I don't want to, and I don't remember if I used the epoxy or regular Elmer's on these wood bases. I think I continued to use the epoxy, and if I did, then that wouldn't help anyway. And you, yeah, I can see the way the epoxy bubbled up around the model. Hmm. Damn, he's militia, man. thought these militia would come off of here nice and easy because my British they came off pretty easy off the metal bases but the militia man they're, they're giving me some trouble okay this guy's getting loose I'm getting underneath him And remember, be very careful not to cut yourself. Okay, that guy's loose, but he's not coming off anytime soon. Get under the plaster. coming off now too. Okay, he's off. That guy's off. And what I'm going to do with these bases is probably just throw them away. Hate to do it, but I'm being I'm being anal about you know switching bases. Uh, one of the advantages, uh, if you noticed, like this militia unit has three bases of six, meaning it's got 18 figures. Well. My militia units that I'm going to be using are only going to have 16 figures. So I'm really saving figures by going to a 4 base instead of a 6 base. And it's... Okay, that's cool. And that's going to also mean that when I'm putting them in formation, they're going to... They're going to look better, in my opinion. Okay, so getting this guy off of here, right? Okay, let's cut the plaster. Okay, that, I cut the plaster down to the wood. Now let's cut under the base, hopefully. Pry him up. And just work him off of there. There you go. Now he's got a bent base. I can fix that, though. Okay, and there's the old base, right, with all the residue. 
And then I've got a box down here under my feet where I'm throwing all the extra bases. Okay, well, we're not done. So now we got to take these models and we clear off just any extra residue off of the bottom of the base. It's okay if it, you see a little white or whatever, because once you glue them down, you're going to paint the base again, and you're going to paint the ground around the base. You might even plaster it again. That just depends on what, how much detail you want to put on it. I'm not sure if I'm going to plaster it. I probably won't, because I think that was overkill last time I did it. It's okay if there's just a little bit of grass on there or whatever. That guy looks cool. Yep, just get a little residue off of there. get the idea so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do all three of these bases and when I'm done I'll be right back all right so we got all the figures off the bases and you can see all the little residue that I got and that's why I have this box here to catch all that now I've got a soft bristle uh, paintbrush I'm going to go over these figures and I'm gonna dust them off just to make sure none of that plaster powder is on any of these bases or figures just to make sure they're cleaned off and then I'm also going to take my exacto knife which I've already done on these guys but I've cleaned off around the bases and I've also flattened the bases because there's sometimes there's glue residue and it keeps them from standing up so I go through and I clean those off all right so let me go ahead and dust all these off uh, and then I'll be right back all right, we're back. Now, I've got some Warlord games. Uh, Warlord games, plastic bases. I've already primed them black. And again, we're going to be putting four figures per base. Uh, and I want to make sure that they fit so that if I need to put them in a formation like this, they will fit. But they don't ever get in a formation like that, really. Uh, in the American War of Independence, they're usually always in a line, so I've got to make sure that they fit in a line more than anything else. And then maybe a march column, because that is a thing that they could possibly do, would be a march column. So I'll need to make sure that they fit so the muskets and stuff like that don't get in each other's way. All right, so uh, primarily we're going to do uh, initially the command stand and now on the command stand you see that we've got uh, the standard bear we also have a leader this leader is carrying a sword so we're going to use him and then we're also definitely going to use the drummer those are absolute figures that we have to use out of this remember there's going to be two extras that we can't actually use now who do I want to put in with the command stand well there's this guy here that looks like he's marching I want to put him in the command stand uh, now these this flag I got from war flag I do believe and it's the Liberty flag with the snake all right so use a standard school glue or white PVA or however you want to call it and I put four drops of glue now I've been doing the four drops or uh, I've been doing this for my Napoleonic figures my Hail Caesar uh, figures my uh, World War II figures uh, pretty much I've only been using Elmer's glue basing this was the one time that I based without uh, yeah, let's put him on this side. This was the one time that I based without... Hmm. That was the one time that I based using something other than Elmer's glue. 
Well, actually, it was Elmer's. It was just some kind of epoxy-like Elmer's glue. Standard bearer and the leader in the front rank. Drummer right behind the standard bearer. I want to make sure that there's enough Elmer's that it squirts or squishes out the sides of all sides around the base so that it will hold it firmly in place. Okay, and then we put the marcher, the EI walking directly behind the commander. Okay, that looks really good. I'm liking it. You can't really see it with the shadows and everything, but that looks good. All right, now see, I tr I'm having to kind of visualize which figures I want to use. Um, I like this guy with the bed cap on. I really like him. I like this guy kind of in a reddish maroon with his rifle pointing up. I like this guy kind of in the port arms. I'm going through and trying to pick and picking guys out that I like for my militia. This guy's just holding his hat. I like that. This guy's reloading. Got to have that guy. This guy's also reloading. So we got a reloading guy and a reloading guy. A reloading guy. There's three reloading guys. They're in different positions. Then I got this guy. He kind of looks a lot like that guy. Now I do have this special guy where he's on his knees firing. And this guy pointing like something's important. This guy's standing and firing. So I'm thinking reloading, standing and firing. Reloading, kneeling and firing. Those guys should all go together. And these guys are all kind of like marching. See, every single one of these is unique and it has a nice flavor to it. Now, just to let you know, I got these figures from Old Glory. Uh, Old Glory 28s. Uh, they do a really good job on mixing up the heads and the bodies. And uh, you can get a bag of like 30 models for $20 or something like that. It's... No, wait, 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 wait. Maybe it's... Eighteen models for thirty dollars, maybe I don't remember. <laughs> but it's a really good, and they're all metal, so they're really good. Okay, so let's let's put this guy. See now, the problem with this is he's gonna with that long barrel sticking out. He's probably gonna hit the guy in front of him. I don't think we're going to have any problem with them being side by side. I don't think that's a problem at all. I think it's the the only issue we might have is, like I was telling you earlier, the march column. Okay. So let's put this guy on the second rank. And I'm going... Oh, that's not going to be enough glue. I can see that already. All right. Let's put this guy, now I've angled his musket so that he's going to miss the guy, the two guys in front. He's going to, his musket's right down the middle. And this guy's got that same issue. He's kneeling and his musket is going to be in the way. So I angled it. I like this guy reloading. This guy reloading right there. I'm going 
gonna put this guy reloading standing behind this guy and then I'm gonna have this guy reloading on the first base now I'm gonna have this guy with his musket up right there Put the command in the absolute front and see if he bumps into it. Nope, didn't think he was. Um, this guy's kind of marching as well. Um, I think I want to kind of put him... I don't know, right here with this guy that's marching. Kind of like that. All right. I like the guy pointing, especially he could be all the way in the back. He's kind of one of those guys. Not a shirker, but you know, <laughs> not a guy that wants to be in the front. Here's the guy with the bed cap. I'm gonna put him back here with this guy that's reloading. I'm gonna turn him a little bit so it looks like he's looking to the front. This guy's holding his hat and kind of moving forward. I'm gonna put him up here so this back base has a little character to it. Now this guy with his yellow hat. I'm not really feeling this dude. I'm gonna leave him off. I'm not really feeling him. This guy. Yeah, I don't want him to bump the guy in front of him. He is doing it. Okay. And this guy's holding his rifle like super high. I think I'm going to do that guy right here. Back him up in the base. Now they're, they are malicious so they don't need to be perfectly online and stuff because they're rabble. Okay, so these two models are bonus models and I get to put in another unit. Okay, so this is them in March column. Right, and it, they all fit together nice and neat. And then once they go into line formation, which is really the only two formations this unit can uh, assume, it has no skirmishers. It has no. It doesn't do attack column. It's not like a French unit in the Napoleonic Wars. It can't do a mixed formation. There's no skirmishers. And then boom, that's the unit. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to split this video into two. I'm going to let this dry overnight, and then tomorrow we'll come in, we'll put some putty on there, and we'll flock up the bases, okay? So that'll be part two of my rebasing. And then what we'll do is we'll also continue to make these videos daily, probably, showing you the progress of my rebasing of my units and of the scenario design and also the uh, maybe terrain building because I plan to get a couple of bridges. Well, I already have one bridge, but I plan to get a second bridge. I plan to get a couple of American Americana houses, uh, maybe more than two, and then uh, fencing and roads and rivers. The, the, the play mat again, I'm gonna do another a canvas sheet. Well, actually, I don't know if I'm going to do a canvas sheet or if I'm going to do like a cigar box or something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I want it to be like a five by nine. And then, uh, yeah, so come back tomorrow and we'll do a little bit more discussion on that. But uh, thanks for coming out and checking out this rebasing video. And I'll see you for part two tomorrow.